Oh, look at this mess, guys. I got a meal prep, but first I got to take care of all these dishes. And just it's just a mess. I can't work in a mess. Everything is dirty. Pancake, everything is dirty. Need to clean this up. And then I got, I don't even know if I can eat my food right now. Let's see how gross this chicken is. All right, here, come, here goes the test. Ugh! <laughs> well, at least I made it to only one chicken breast left. But that smells like absolute shit. <laughs> the problem was is I made a massive ham for Christmas. And ham just lasts a long time. Ugh, oh, still smells so good. So I've been focusing mostly on eating all the ham. And some of the chicken kind of went bad in the process. But... I don't know how much longer I have left of this ham. I'm probably going to try to kill this over the next few days. But i got to start cooking some of my chicken because I have to get it prepped. And I can at least freeze it or get it cooked and put it in the fridge. And that way it will last longer. And I know my daughter is going to want to eat the chicken. So I'm going to make that with aso sauce. And then what I've been doing lately too, guys, which is actually really fun, is I've been uh, making green peppers to go with my chicken. And I just bought something that's really cool. I'll show it to you guys. Let me find it right here. I haven't even used it yet. Let me take this thing off. So this, we were at the mall, like at one of those stores, like we were buying um, Christmas gifts for people. And I was buying something for my brother's house. He just bought a house. And then I saw this and I had just started buying green peppers and putting them with my chicken. And I'm like, man, there's such a pain in the ass to like cut um, the middle out, you know? But this thing, all you do is you go like that and it gets all of the seeds out. Like in one swipe. I'll actually, I'll film myself doing it so you guys can see. But I thought that was really cool. Another thing I'm going to do is I got to chop up these potatoes and boil them. Remember, if you put sweet potatoes, if you boil the sweet potatoes... Don't bake them. If you boil them, it keeps them low in the glycemic index, so super important. And then over here, I have beans. So I put um, black beans in the crock pot, so not canned beans. I do black beans, regular beans, crock pot for about four or five hours on high, and that's how I cook my beans, and they come out amazing. And one of the things I like to do when I cook is that's when I get to binge watch my anime. So right now, I've been binge watching Fairy Tale, and I'm already on season four. And I still got two more to go. Five is right here. Season six is on its way in the mail. Should probably get it sometime today. But it's a really cool anime if you guys have never seen it before called Fairy Tale. It's basically about like wizards and guilds and using magic. It's really cool. Check it out if you're into that kind of stuff. Alright guys, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting all the fat. <laughs> Everyone's going to thumbs down my video after seeing that gross face. You just thumbs it up. <laughs> going to be cutting all the fat off my chicken before I cook it.
And now the best part from all this cooking, I get a nice warm meal and I'm also munching on leafy greens because I'm trying to cut down on cobs for my photo shoot coming up in Ireland. I gotta look my leanest and my best for this shoot, so I'm taking my meal prep very seriously for the next few weeks as well as my training. Hey, what's up guys? With the gym today, we're gonna be hitting some heavy back and biceps. Doing a quick shoulder warm up right now. Probably gonna do a couple quick sets of the actual exercise, lightweight sets. I'm not gonna show those on camera. It's gonna jump into the workout. But I always like to start off with shoulder breakers. Loosens up my shoulders real good. All the way up, all the way down. I like to go kind of around in semi-circles like this as well. <laughs> your, your bottle you flipped just fell. <laughs> but anyways, I'm gonna be utilizing that cheat and recover method today. So you guys are gonna be seeing some really heavy weight followed by a drop set with lighter weight. So make sure you pay attention in case you wanna give the workout a try. All right guys, so the first exercise is gonna be the lat pull down. We're gonna do a total of four sets and each set is gonna consist of a cheat and recover with eight repetitions each. That means you're doing a total of 16 repetitions and the way this works is the first eight repetitions are gonna be a bit of a cheat where you're using momentum but still, tr still trying to focus on that negative. Then you're gonna lower the weight and you're gonna perform eight more repetitions but this time you guys will notice that I'm not using momentum. I'm really trying to focus on having a nice hard contraction during the concentric and eccentric portions of this movement. Make sure that when you guys do this too, you're not just letting the weight fly up. Control that negative and really isolate your lats. My recover set was still kind of a cheat set. I tried bumping the weight up more than I did last time. Shouldn't have done that. All right, all right, let's go. Now we're getting serious now. Hey, don't look over here. This might be too serious for you. On, now, just to make sure there's no confusion, this is set two. And once again, guys, we're doing cheat and recover. So for the first eight repetitions, you're gonna focus on using a bit of momentum. And you guys will notice I'm bringing the barbell to my chest. If you cannot get the bar to your chest, then it's too heavy for you on the cheat. So make sure you fix that. Then when it's time for the recover, guys, once again, eight repetitions, real strict form, really focus on coming up slow with that negative and feeling the isolation in those lats. Also, in order to make sure you're getting full range of motion, you guys have to sit forward like I am and bring that bar all the way down to the top of your chest. If you can't bring it down to the top of your chest, then the weight is too heavy for the recovery set and you're gonna have to lower the weight to do it properly. Just wanted to throw like body weight into that one too, but didn't want to. Guys, that burn is, just feels so good after hauling 200 pounds, then dropping it down to 120, and then really sticking it, man. You feel it. Got so pumped up, walking over like, just got it in our heads, we're gonna go do bent over rows. And then someone took the rack. <laughs> All right, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some single arm rows here, palms facing in. And this is gonna allow us to hit a bit more mid back, mid traps, and a bit more rhomboids as well. All right, guys, let's get ready for the seated single arm row. Once again, we're doing four total sets, starting off first with the cheat, but you're gonna be doing eight repetitions per side. This is obviously a single arm exercise, guys, so we're not doing both at the same time. You can do both at the same time, obviously, when doing this machine, but I really wanted to focus and isolate on each side so I could lift the max amount of weight as possible. Obviously, if you're using both hands, you get to separate the amount of energy you're using into both arms. And you don't want to be doing that if your goal is to isolate one side at a time. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm trying to see some significant growth. I'm trying to hit my muscles as hard as I can. And it might take a bit longer to do it this way, but it's going to be worth it in the end because I'm going to be allowed to really isolate and hit. I'm still hitting a bit of lats here, but I'm hitting mostly mid-back rhomboids, hitting some traps as well, working on some areas where I'd like to see some more growth. As soon as you finish those eight repetitions, you're going to rip some weight off. So I just cut the weight in half. And then for the second part of set one, 
you're doing the recover. And again, you're still doing eight repetitions per side. The only difference is on the first eight repetitions, you guys noticed that I was using a bit of momentum in order to bring the weight back. I was still controlling the negative as much as I could, but I was using a bit of momentum on the concentric portion of the movement. Now in the recover set, I'm using just my muscles to move the weight. I'm not using any momentum. I'm not throwing my back into it. I'm not thrusting my arm backwards. I'm using just the muscles, and I'm still getting a real deep stretch when I bring the weight back to the starting position. And that's gonna be key here, guys. Get that nice deep stretch and contraction. <sighs> Complete muscle fatigue on those guys. Doing a total of 16 reps per side. And it's gonna get intense. Those first eight, you're gonna feel like a beast. And those last eight, you're gonna feel like a bitch. <laughs> Cause it's light and it's heavy. But that's what you guys want. Pumps are already kicking in. You can see a big difference between the time we started this routine to getting here right now. Blood's flowing, strength's picking up. It's a good workout. I'm missing half my callus from yesterday. Can you see that? Is it focusing? <laughs> I just noticed it was gone when I left the gym. I miss it. It's a part of me. You know? It takes years to build calluses like that. And you just get ripped out. One deadlift session. The next exercise is going to be the barbell bent over row. And you guys are going to notice that I'm doing my underhand grip with my hands. Underhand grip is going to allow you to hit more lats and lower traps. If you guys are using an overhand grip, you're hitting more upper traps and upper back, hitting more rear deltoids, okay? The goal of this workout is to focus on the back, really trying to hit those lats hard for this exercise, so use the underhand grip. That was a little too heavy, but that's okay. I'd rather go a little too heavy on the first set than not go heavy enough. Now for the recovery set, and you're going to notice I significantly dropped the weight. I'm only working with 135 here because I want to still be able to get that nice deep stretch at the bottom, but I want to be able to do all the work by myself. I want to use just my muscles and focus on pulling back with my elbows on every single repetition. I wanted to show you guys one more set just to explain a few more things. So at the start of set two, you guys will notice once again that I have my weightlifting belt on. You want to have as little restrictions as possible when you're trying to overload your muscles with as much weight as possible. So your lower back will fatigue obviously when you're rowing heavy weight. So make sure you have your weightlifting belt on during those repetitions. Then obviously for the recover set guys, you're not going to need that belt. So just take it off. Another thing I noticed is that the Inzer Forever belt obviously has the latch on the front and that latch was actually restricting a bit of range of motion. I wasn't able to bring the barbell to my belly button because the latch was in the way. So taking it off actually helped improve the lift too. Now that we finished a total of 12 working sets for the back, which it's actually more like 24 working sets because you guys are technically doing two two sets per one set with the cheat and recover, we're gonna move on into the alternating dumbbell bicep curl. Now you guys are gonna notice a few different things here. Number one, when I teach the dumbbell curl, I always teach to keep your palms facing forward the entire time for maximum bicep engagement. But what you're gonna notice on the cheat set is that I'm starting with my palms facing in and then I'm turning my hand about halfway up through the movement. The reason being is because when I'm trying to cheat on this exercise without a spotter, it's going to be easier for me to get the dumbbells to the very top of the movement by doing this, and then I can control the dumbbells on the way down and focus a bit more on the negative, which is the whole portion or the whole point of doing these cheat reps is to get the weight up and then focus on that negative. Then as soon as you're done, you're going to lower the weight, probably cut the weight in half and then perform your next set of eight repetitions with the dumbbells facing forward the entire time, maximizing the amount of bicep engagement on the positive part of the movement and the negative part of the movement. Okay guys? So and as you can see too, I'm not just alternating the curls as fast as I can, I'm focusing on each arm at a time. So I'm not lifting the left arm until the right arm is completely down at the bottom of the movement. 
Another thing too, really focus on that mind-muscle connection here. As you're curling, focus on your bicep and focus on squeezing it as hard as you can. Try to drive as much blood to that area as possible, as much energy as possible to lift the most amount of weight. Now if you try that and you don't get pumped, I don't think anything's gonna work for you. I'll tell you what though, one thing I'm really liking about this, especially on back day, is I'm just getting so much more engagement in my traps from doing all the other exercises. It's just incredible. Even doing the curls, my traps, upper traps are so fatigued that on the way down, you can just feel a nice steep stretch through my trap. And that's where we want to see some real growth, so it's perfect. Next up is the hammer curl. One of my favorite exercises for hitting the brachialis and the brachioradialis. For those of you looking to increase the peak of your bicep, there's a muscle right in between the tricep and the bicep. You guys can kind of see it when I get to the top of the movement as I'm doing the curl. This exercise targets that muscle called the brachialis, and as that gets bigger, it'll actually push your bicep peaks up and that's why we do the hammer curl so obviously you're activating your biceps you have the short head and the long head with this exercise but that's not the main focus of it now as you can see as I was alternating my curls for the cheat set I was using a bit of momentum on the way up still trying to control them on the way down but as we move to the recover set I'm controlling the positive and the negative still going full range of motion but focusing a bit more on the squeeze on the way up and then focusing on holding that squeeze on the way down. Now you guys might have also noticed too that for the biceps portion of this routine, we're only doing three sets per exercise. For the back portion, we were doing four sets per exercise. The reason why we're only doing three sets for biceps is because we've already pretty, we pretty good fatigued them doing our back workout, so they're not gonna need that much more work to finish off. All right guys, for the last exercise, we're gonna hit the biceps at a little bit of a different angle, and we're also gonna blast just a lot of volume on these last few sets, okay? Throughout the whole workout, obviously we started off with back, we're doing some cheat sets followed by recover sets, so we got a lot of heavy weight, a lot of overload on the biceps, obviously on the back as well. So now towards the end of the workout, your biceps should be hurting, they should be fatigued right now, Pumps be pretty good. And what we're going to do is blast, like I said, some high volume in there to wrap up this workout. So the last exercise for biceps is going to be a single arm standing bicep curl, okay? Now for this exercise, we're not doing a cheat and recover set. All we're doing is three sets of 20 repetitions per side. The whole point of this is we're basically going to try to drive as much blood into that bicep as possible, really focusing on ripping and tearing as many muscle fibers down as possible yeah. to finish up this workout. If you guys want to see growth, you need to do high volume exercises like this so that you can force as much blood into the area as possible and really expand and explode those muscle bellies. And what this is also going to do by doing this at the end of your workout is it's going to allow you to train heavier and harder during the beginning of your workout and all those other exercises so that by the time you get to a movement like this, you're already pretty fatigued. It's not going to take that much weight to hit that high volume. And because the muscles are already pretty much shredded by the time you get to this exercise, you're gonna notice that it's gonna be very, very easy to finish them off. And because they're so fatigued too, you're gonna have to recruit a lot of muscle fibers that you normally wouldn't, whereas if you were to start off with this exercise. Because if you were to start off with this exercise in the beginning of your workout, it'd be much easier to do, your biceps aren't fatigued, so you wouldn't be having to recruit or force your body to recruit as much energy in order to complete those repetitions. And that's why sometimes I like ending my workouts with more of these high volume movements because it's gonna force me to really focus on isolating the muscle that I'm trying to train to get the most efficient workout and to get the most out of the exercise. And you guys are gonna absolutely love this when you're done. Look, you can see the deltoids like shaking right there. Pretty intense stuff. You guys see that right now? You see that pump? All that volume at the very end, man. Those muscle bellies are getting really swelled up from this workout, from all the heavy lifting that we're doing. 
and now just we're gonna finish it up, force a ton of blood in the area, so when by the time you leave the gym, you want your biceps to feel like they're about to pop, and that's what that high volume at the end is gonna do for you. All right guys, that wraps up today's workout. Now remember, it's January. You're really excited right now. You're in the gym, you get your New Year's resolution going. You wanna see some massive gains, but remember, it's not gonna happen overnight. You gotta stick with it and utilize that excitement you have right now to make the gym a potty lifestyle. Find a way to fit it in, not force it in. And that's all it comes down to, guys. Whenever you're trying a new program or if your life's been kinda crazy and you're trying to get things back on track, it all comes down to scheduling. You have to schedule fitness into your life to make it part of your life. Don't see it as a burden. See it as excitement. See it as a chance for you to reach goals you might not have hit before. And you can always count on me to make sure you're getting all the tools and the workouts you need to reach those goals. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.